Good afternoon. Uh, welcome back. Hope you had a good Easter week. Uh, I know I did. Took a little bit of time off, obviously from, uh, from making videos here as well. Uh, but just before that I had a visitor. And when they came, uh, they also brought with them a few items, perishable items, uh, that they left behind. And so they're still fine. I have found in my spare parts enough components that I think I can make a pretty uh, good little refrigerator that's energy efficient. Now, I don't have a, a standard compressor, but I do have a solid state Pelche device uh, in my stock of components that I bought a long time ago. And actually, it's, it's not a bad little unit, uh, about 100 watts worth of cooling, which should be more than enough for a small little cold box. But I only have one of them, and in order to make that work, it's important that you take the heat uh, from the hot side away as quick as possible. Now, I only have those components though, and so it's important that, uh, you know, when I put them together, I don't do it in such a way that it ends up burning itself out, which is quite possible with that with that Pelche device. If it gets too hot on one side, if I just put 12 volts on it, uh, it's going to over tamp and, and melt. It, it'll it'll damage itself, and then you know I'll be out of part, and my stuff will still perish, and I'll have just wasted a bunch of uh, components. While it's still bushcraft, I'm I'm in the bush. I'm going to use my 3D printer. I'm going to spend a little bit of extra time and model those parts up in CAD. With my calipers, I can measure out uh, the size of the, the heat sink and the fan that I have uh, and print those out pretty accurately. I have a little resin printer. And so just uh, I'll spend a little bit of extra time, but then in the, in the end, that, uh, that little cold box should be quite a serviceable little unit. I mean, a person can just buy one, I know, but uh, I can't, uh, can't get one here, so I'll have to make one. So we'll start by measuring the components that I have. I'll model them up in CAD. I'll import those CAD models into my 3D printer software, create the supports necessary to print them, and so once I've printed them and post-processed them, then uh, then we'll you know mechanically put this uh, thing together. So after the mechanical components are all put together, uh, and that looks good, and, and we've got good uh, thermal contact from that Pelche device to both the cold side and the hot side, uh, then I'll spend a little bit of time, uh, make a quick circuit uh, just to manage the temperature. So that's the plan, let's get going. But it's just nice to have everything sized exactly right. Thank you. 
the setup here uh, for my printer. Every time I, I do a print, I just zero the, uh, the platform, just do a quick little service on the printer. Basically, I cleaned out the tray and got everything ready for a print here. So I have the printer set up here. This is the uh, the resin that I'm using. It's called, uh, I believe that's pronounced Cyratech or Cyratech. Not sure. Build is the is the resin I'm using. Now I actually had uh, some old stuff, uh, just a little bit that was left over. I've now marked that as waste, and I'm using a little bit of this old stuff here. This is the newest and full container. So it's been sitting for quite a while, at least at least a year. And it doesn't actually have a shelf life displayed on it, but I wouldn't be surprised if it uh, if it might if it has an issue. So we'll see. This is quite a complicated complex print. I'm going to do the heat shield to start with because it's pretty thin, and we'll see how that turns out. So I copied that uh, 3D model that we've uh, modeled in FreeCAD and then prepared for print in the Chi2 box or Chi2 box uh, application. So now we go to print. There's our heat shield.ctb. It's going to take about three hours to do this print, so I'm going to make sure that this guy is set up. I don't have to move it. Okay. That's ready to go. Let's check what our temperature is there, because it should be ambient at least 20 degrees Celsius with this particular resin. That's what I thought. It's pretty warm in here right now. So, all right, let's give her. I've zeroed the head. It's nice and tight. The build platform. It's been a while since I've done a print here, so there we go. So this is the first part of three prints that I need to do. This is old resin, so we'll see how we'll see how well it works. So uh, it took four hours and seven minutes. So the calculation was a, a little off. Now I'm only going to show you this for a moment because I have to clean it, and uh, it actually the lighting is quite bright right now, and I, I don't want to cure it before I get a chance to clean it. There it is. Oh, I think that looks really good, actually. So, that's that model. I'll uh, take this off of the build platform, clean it, remove the, uh, remove the supports, all those print supports, and we'll take a good look at it. So, I'm going to just pop this off the build platform first. All right, let this dry for a moment. And then I'm going to uh, fill this up with some fresh uh, clean water. And after that's dry, set it in here, and then I'll set it out in the sun. I do have a curing lamp, but uh, I think that, uh, I think I'd prefer to do that in the sun today. Now this, unfortunately, is one of three parts. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, my resin was good, and it, and it appears to be. So, okay, let's get this going. It's currently around uh, 3 p.m. This is going to be the heat shield. Now, originally when I drew this model in FreeCAD, I said I was going to use a resin called Sculpt, which is yellow. <laughs> I decided that because I have so much more of this and, um, you know, it's not going to be up above 100 degrees C or anywhere near 100 degrees C, um, there was no need for the high temp stuff. So now what... I mean, I have a curing lamp, which is just a uh, 405 nanometer wavelength um, LED panel that this will sit under, but the sun, the sun will cure this much better than any of my lamps will. So I'll just find a whitish rock, flex as much of that as I can.
just gonna let that cure for 15 minutes or so and uh, go for a little walk. So, okay, let me set this on top just so that it's got a place to hang out for a moment. Scraper here, and very carefully, without scratching my film, give the bottom a little stir here. Let's see, zoom off here. Okay, so we've zeroed it. Here's our new duct print. Oh, thing of beauty. This is going to be a five hour print though, so let's give her. Here's our part, our duct. This actually turned out pretty well. Quite happy with that. Oh. Huh. I tell you, it's pretty slick. It's another day today. I also need to grab a bunch of firewood, etc. So now usually, I think most of the time, people will probably remove the supports after you wash and cure it but again this is a this is not a cosmetic part I mean I don't really care how it looks so we're just going to carefully remove these supports while or before we cure this thing uh, and then I, I will remove the re pardon me remove the supports wash it uh, and then and then we cure it. Oh yeah. Usually I yeah, would just grab a pair of snips, but again, oops, I don't think we need to. Good, didn't break everything. So, for those of you who haven't uh, worked with a 3D printer before, um, it's actually not obviously very complicated, um, but this is a resin printer, not to be confused with an FDM or deposition modeling, which is the, uh, uh, the filament um, that gets extruded through uh, a hot nozzle and then deposited into shape. Works a bit differently. What it does, though, is yield very high-resolution parts, or it's capable of yielding very high-resolution parts. Um, you know, there's a few trade-offs, of course, but uh, for the most part, it's a pretty solid process. And even this cheap printer uh, is capable of producing some very serviceable, uh, real parts. I've got a little UV lamp there. I'll just cure that. That's the last part. It, it was worth it to spend the extra time uh, and actually print these out, design them in CAD, uh, and then print them out uh, because what it'll end up providing me is a much more efficient uh, cooler mechanism. Uh, and uh, it'll be less likely that I'll, I'll lose or, or uh, destroy any of my components in, in the process. I have here some uh, styrofoam. I haven't measured this, but uh, I've just uh, turned on my hot wire cutter here momentarily just to check things and I just cut off this, uh, this strip here 
it makes a lot uh, it's a lot easier using one of these hot wire cutters than it is trying to cut this with a knife or a saw that's a very messy endeavor and I do happen to have one of these it's a useful thing so what I'm going to do is uh, just cut a chunk off uh, that's you know a little bit larger than the the footprint of this cooler unit and this is the piece of adapter foam that I'll use to, uh, you know, augment a box uh, to keep it cold. So it's just a structure that uh, helps insulate the hot side and the cold side right in the area where there's going to be a significant amount of heat. In this case, this heat sink, right? Because once again, that Peltier device, when it turns on, one side gets hot, one side gets cold. So the hot side, not only do I want to get the heat away as quick as I can, hence the fan and the duct, then I also want to keep that heat from contaminating the cold side. So, hence the insulation. Uh, and you'll see I'll sandwich, uh, sandwich the foam in between, and then I'll put my cooling rods in, and at the bottom, well, when I cut the hole through this uh, styrofoam, they're going to reach through and touch the other side of the Peltier device. So, we've got insulation, we've got thermal, uh, thermal contact, we're going to extract the heat away from one side of it, and then the inside of this box should be nice and cold. I should be able to get down to freezing. Uh, here I've got all the parts printed out. I'll just show you them out here on the beach. It's a little bit brighter. It's maybe easier to see. So uh, it's the next day. It took quite a while to actually <laughs> run these prints and clean them off. So, so we have here the heat sink, my scrap heat sink. I found this in my junk bin. Uh, that's just the, the heat sink. It's actually a pretty solid hefty thing. It's got a nice slug of copper, copper in the center. So I have this uh, fan, of course, and then the uh, the Pelche device. And so one side, when you put uh, when you put a DC voltage on this uh, and run current through it, um, I think it's rated for 12 volts. One side gets cold, and the other side gets hot. Now, if you just left the power on this, uh, the thing will continue to the one side will continue to rise in temperature above its max 100 degrees Celsius that it's rated for, and uh, it would probably damage itself quite quickly. So it's important that if you're using this to cool something, uh, you need to get that heat away from that side as quickly as you can. So now the other side, of course, I need to get that cold uh, into the cold box. And so I don't have another heat sink that would work for that case. What I do have is this pure aluminum anode uh, that's used for a hot water heater. So with that, I think that's all I need to do out here. I've got all my uh, mechanical parts, minus the minus the box that I'm going to put this in, but that's fairly trivial. That's a small part of this. All right, well, uh, we're uh, we're back at the lab tent. It's uh, it's actually evening now. I got busy doing a few other things. I turned those uh, pieces of aluminum that I cut on the lathe just to face the uh, the ends, so they're nice and and flat, uh, so that they'll make good thermal contact. And when I use this uh, thermal paste, yeah, we'll transfer the heat uh, as well as we can, at least. I'm just going to hot glue these into this position here, uh, onto this cold, uh, I called it the cold shield in CAD here, but this uh, cold side mount, uh, just to, to keep them in place, uh, right? And so they'll be fastened to this uh, plate, and then it'll be bolted through through this foam. I suppose I'm kind of ready to uh, at least assemble this thing and start on the electronics. Okay. Doesn't really need to be all that tight, just finger tight I think would be sufficient. So, not that this is super critical, but uh, I'll put, put the wires out all the same side here. I've got uh, 12 volts going into the fan. So I'm gonna put in 3.3 amps. You see I've set 12 volts. Now it's gonna drop right down. I bet you around three volts, three or four volts or something like that. Yeah, 16 degrees. So, so, actually, let's just max that guy out, really get some cooling power. So we're already heating up a little bit. So I've just put a very little bit of liquid water here. Um, oops. 
Not bad. I think that's probably enough of a test for our purposes. Really frozen on there good. There we go. Look at that. Piece of ice. Excellent. Now, of course, the, the circuit that we're going to build up, um, I'm just going to use a breadboard and then a solderable breadboard so I can just transfer the stuff over. Uh, I'm not going to bother uh, creating a, a, the printed circuit board. For the logic, I'm using something called the Trinket M0. Uh, so it was quite inexpensive. Um, what it is is, a, is effectively a microcontroller that has a built-in bootloader and firmware that allows you to run Python code effectively. Uh, it's called Circuit Python. It's a subset of it, but uh, it lets you basically plug it in. It comes shows up like a drive, and you just uh, drop your uh, Python code on it. I haven't uh, got a chance to use them yet. Uh, I've got about five of them, and so uh, I thought I would use it for this project. So that's going to be the controller. So it's going to manage. It's going to look at the the. Uh, temperature that's in the cold side and when that temperature reaches a certain threshold that we program uh, it's going to turn on the Pelche device it's actually going to duty cycle the Pelche device at, at a switching frequency a kilohertz and also we can manage the fan uh, independently so my, my thinking is I'm going to turn on this device until we reach our temperature and then shut off or roll off the the power to this uh, Pelche device and then leave the fan run uh, for a little while afterwards. So when when a person starts uh, putting together something like this, uh, you want to take out all of your data sheets. These are the components that I'm going to be using. So this, starting with the Pelche module, um, this is the device that's actually doing the, the cooling. And all it consists of is uh, two dissimilar metals and when you run power through them, you know, basically we're going to gloss over a bunch of physics, but uh, basically one side gets cold and the other side gets hot. You're pumping the heat, so to speak, uh, from one side of the device to the other. So then uh, after that, uh, this is the MOSFET that's going to be switching the Pelche device. And uh, it's definitely overkill, but I have a whole bunch of them. All right, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but uh, just for the interested. This is the temperature sensor. It's quite accurate, but uh, in my implementation, I think what I'm going to have to do is probably just code in a little bit of uh, averaging. Finally, this is the uh, device that's uh, the TIP 102G. This is the thing that I'm using to switch the fan. Here's a pinout for the trinket. I, I typically have a you know a document reference open. If you're familiar with Python, it's a it's a pretty great uh, programming language, especially for something like this. Uh, it's really quick and easy, and I can whip together a refrigerator. This formula here uh, to calculate the uh, data uh, to calculate the temperature I took right from the data sheet. They gave you this formula um, to solve for t, and so I just translated that into uh, Python here. Now that we've uh, done the design on the computer, I thought I'd just quickly uh, breadboard up the circuit. Got it right here. This, uh, this MOSFET switch is being turned on and turned off uh, at 50% uh, basically. It's on half the time. Now the switching frequency, the rate that it goes on and off, is one kilohertz. That's the, the rate that I chose. And I did that just because uh, it, the slower the uh, switching frequency, the easier it was uh, to actually make that work. So, uh, okay, we got 5.1. So right now the fan is running. That's because uh, this transistor is on. And you can see the uh, the system or the, the firmware knows that, oh, we're 21 degrees Celsius. That's our amb ambient temperature here. So the fan's on and the Pelche module's at 50%. I think that's good. Let's solder this up and uh, actually put the board up top here. And then I can actually just plug plug battery power directly into it and we'll actually see how well it works. So. The nice thing about using this, uh, this breadboard here is that uh, you can just transfer the components directly across and it makes for a, a less error prone uh, circuit build, especially if you're in a tent. I took that styrofoam uh, plate that I had uh, and I had a few other scrap pieces and so I made a, a new lid here. 
Um, so it's insulated, and then I used emergency blanket. I have a few emergency blankets kicking around, and so I just wrapped uh, everything up in that. I added a layer of foam on the bottom, and then later on I'll, I'll maybe add a little bit of foam on the walls, but there's, um, there's emergency blanket uh, inside and outside of this box. Oh, that works great! You know, I could even make it a little better if, uh, if I put a fan in there, but uh, that's sitting at uh, four degrees. <laughs> it's, it's quite chilly in there, that's great. I'm, uh, I'm only pulling about uh, two and a half amps at the moment. Now the, uh, I've got it plugged into my, uh, just my batteries directly there. As you can see the, uh, <laughs> the control board, I just mounted on a piece of foam <laughs> and taped it to the back. Uh, now I'll be able to plug in with my laptop here into this USB port and actually set the temperature. Uh, for now that's what I'm going to do. Also, yeah, I'm going to clean this up a bunch. I just kind of haphazardly threw it together right now uh, just to get things uh, ready. Uh, today's Monday, I'm going to uh, release this video today and so I've got some editing to do. So I think it's time, uh, I think it's time I cut this video. Yeah, all in all I'd say that worked pretty well. You may have uh, been asking why why not just go to the the creek uh, and put uh, put a little pipe in or even just put a cooler or a box in the stream and that's true uh, that would work quite well and, and I'm gonna have done that uh, from time to time after I've made something and I wanted to save it for a little bit but it's quite a ways over to that creek and it's not very convenient this certainly is more convenient and it's efficient enough that uh, it'll work with my solar system so anyway uh, I think I'm going to end this one here. I hope you found that interesting, and we'll see you next time.